This is a very critical time for the state of Israel. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally, the Jewish people are friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal advocacy campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. Good evening, everybody. Your Excellency, Ambassador Danny Danone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the United Nations. We're absolutely thrilled that you're here. I'm Liz Clayman from the Fox Business Network. I wanted to start this evening with the word tradition. I'm your MC, and I began thinking about what message we really wanted to send. Tradition, of course, is that famous song from Fiddler on the Roof, which, if you don't know, and I don't know how you couldn't know if you're Jewish, uh, the story of isolated and embattled, but ultimately very resilient Russian Jews in the early 1900s. Jewish tradition teaches us, as you all know, that many things are important. However, one is extremely, extremely solid and rises above everything else when it comes to Israel, and that is the number 10. 10 measures of beauty were bestowed upon the world. Nine of them were awarded to Jerusalem. So we're here this evening to celebrate the beauty of Jerusalem. It is, it is breathtaking. It is so beautiful, but the emotion that we have when we get there finally is even more special. I always think of my favorite Hebrew song, Yerushalayim Shel Zaha, Jerusalem of Gold. Tonight we are so proud that you guys are all here, and anybody with the standing room only, we're waving to you. We know that you're there with us, and we are so absolutely thrilled to celebrate it. Right here, imagine this, at the United Nations, where, like Tevia, in Fiddler on the Roof, Israel has been embattled. See, Danny Dunno knows about this. Right here under this roof, Israel has been isolated, but now more than ever, Israel is showing resilience at the United Nations. Before we begin, we want to thank all of our very wonderful partners who helped bring all of this together. They made this a very special reality. Thank you to Keep Jerusalem. Im Eshkashesh, Eshkachech. Oh, you know, I practiced that and I do have the Chacha talent. Eshkachech, for promoting a petition declaring our steadfast commitment, that's why you guys are all here, to justice and righteousness and to Jerusalem. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally, the Jewish people are friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org. Mr. Jordan Sekulow is a human rights attorney with offices all around the world, and, and here's what's crucial about him. He served on the very legal team that defended Israel's position at the International Criminal Court. We need fighters like him. Please join me in welcoming Israel's most passionate of supporters, Jordan Sekulow. Ambassador Danone, distinguished guest, ladies, gentlemen, and friends, it really is an honor to stand here at the United Nations, of all places, 
celebrating and not condemning the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. Because we all know what happens here almost at a daily basis at the United Nations. So it is historic for us to all be here tonight celebrating a reunified Jerusalem under uh, in the capital of Israel. You know, it's interesting that 50 years is a very special number in the Jewish tradition. The rabbis noted in the ancient biblical text, a period of 50 years is sometimes referred to by the word le'alam. It also means forever. In the Talmud, Rabbi Akiva says that the word netzach, which means eternity or victory, refers to the city of Jerusalem itself. In this case, I think it's very clear that while we are celebrating the Netzach, the victory of the first 50 years of having Jerusalem reunited, we are also celebrating the Netzach, the eternity of having Jerusalem reunited forever under the Jewish state of Israel. But 50 years is a long time. And for some people, many at the United Nations and around the globe, it's been long enough for them to forget the miracles that the whole world witnessed, the biblical reenactment on an international stage of David and Goliath. But we, we don't forget. We remain thankful for having seen the fulfillment of biblical prophecies, the return of the Jewish people home, and the rebuilding of Jerusalem. But for others, it's just been long enough to, for them to forget the legality of Israel and even more so, the legality of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And as Liz said, well, and as an attorney, it's quite simple. You can't start a fight with someone, then cry foul when they hit back. It's a principle the UN Security Council has no problem with, except in Israel's case. In June of 1967, I know as many of you know, Israel was literally surrounded, and I think it's always important that we make the case and so people understand why Jerusalem is this eternal capital in modern times, not just historically, but in modern times. Israel is surrounded with enemy troops and countries that were openly, publicly proclaiming their, their will to destroy her, to kill her citizens, and too often as we hear today about Israel, to wipe Israel off the map and off the face of history. There were almost daily proclamations. Unfortunately, there's too many of those today as well. But there was one difference. See, after Egypt closed the Straits of Tehran in an open act of war, Israel did what she had no other choice to do. She hit back. She engaged in a defensive battle, something lost on most of the members of the UN who condemn Israel, during which, during this defensive battle, Israel regained territory that was rightfully hers under the mandate. And then, which is often overlooked in our history, think about this, have you heard this much at the United Nations or ever before at an official UN event? In an incredible act of unprecedented grace, which Israel was no, uh, under no uh, authority and no mandate to do after this uh, defensive battle, Israel gave back most of the land in an attempt to make peace with her enemies. Why was that? Because that's what Israel stands for. That is who the Israeli people are, and that is why we all must do our part to stand for Israel and Jerusalem as the reunited capital of Israel. But the problem, and we face that every day here at the United Nations, and so does Ambassador Danone, certainly, is that as soon as the battle ended on the field, when Israel's enemies saw they could not physically overpower her, they may try again, failing, even in surprise attacks, there was a new kind of battle started. This is a battle that wages today. It's why the American Center for Law and Justice, why we are here and why I am here speaking with you uh, today. Because I wanted to reassure you about one thing when it comes to these new battles. 
to delegitimize Israel in the international arena. And I think I need to be very clear about it. It hasn't worked, it won't work, and we can never allow it to work. We can never allow the delegitimization of Israel at these international institutions. And that is what we are fighting for, to protect Israel at every step of the way. And you may not know this, but around the world there are people like me, my organization, law firm, that dedicate a lot of their time to make sure that Israel is always represented. As Liz mentioned, I, along with a team of our lawyers from the ACLJ, led by our, uh, my father, who's our chief counsel, Dr. Jay Seculo, actually defended Israel's interest at the International Criminal Court in The Hague, when The Hague was considering uh, jurisdiction over Israeli troops, many of which had dual citizenship in countries that were ready to throw them to the International Criminal Court, which put them in a very difficult spot if, as dual citizens who defended their, their homeland of Israel but may have had family in another country that they could no longer return to. One of those individuals is actually on our legal staff, currently still serves in the reserves with the IDF, uh, and has, uh, was part of that team as well. So this had not only this esoteric impact at these international courts that we sometimes feel, or even here at the UN, where a lot of this sounds like words and not actions. One of our own legal team members was facing this very issue. If he returned home, he could be arrested and potentially sent to the International Criminal Court and treated as a war criminal. Understand that, as a war criminal and an international body. So literally tonight, what we've decided to do with the American Center for Law and Justice, we actually have a team flying to The Hague right now. We have offices all over the world, in Europe, in Israel, in Jerusalem. And this is on a conference to combat this at the European level. Uh, the legal battle, if you will, to define not just Israel and Israel's right to exist, but Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And you know, every single day, we defend students right here in the United States. This is, not, this is not just in Europe. This is right here at home for many of us. Every day we defend these students, professors, others who have been vilified, sometimes their jobs threatened, for standing up for Israel. Right now, as I speak, we're in federal court defending Israeli institutions against terrorists. Now, when I say federal court, I mean U.S. federal court. It's happening right here in the United States of America, not just here inside the United Nations. But we're working all across the country, even at the state level, and you, you've seen this work before, to draft bills that will uphold and enshrine greater protections against anti-Semitism in the law. This is what we're seeing on college campuses. But listen, we've handled a lot of cases. We win because we have to win. You can't lose these cases. You cannot lose these cases because that is one step closer to the other side's goal to delegitimize Israel and ultimately their target to delegitimize Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish state of Israel. But I think that everyone in this room tonight and those in the overflow room as well, we all have a duty. I mean, you were invited here tonight for a reason because of your stance for Israel. And when you have a duty, it means you have to be prepared uh, to protect Israel's rights in your own way. So we all need your help, all the organizations that are part of this event. You know, as lawyers, we're just meant to be the backstop for all of these issues. We, we're going to make sure that no one gets away with lies. We're, we're the, as courts are, the place of last resort. We need people to engage in what is more a proactive, we need to get off the defensive, but a proactive defense of Israel. You can do it on your campuses, around the country, in op-eds, in the news. We, we see how much, I mean, even in this own body at the United Nations, where there's just outright lies. Well, we all exist, every one of, in this, of, of us in this room is an influencer to an extent to combat these very lies. Right here, actually, and it's pretty big. This was just put together in a couple of weeks. 
is a petition mostly of American Christians who stood with Israel. And they have, they've signed, this is nearly 300,000 people in two weeks, defending Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. If we can do that in a couple of weeks, imagine what we can do in six months. Imagine what we can do as a, in a year. Imagine what we can do if we stand together. But let me close with something that I believe is most important. We must shift the narrative. It cannot just be all of us on the defensive anymore. We the supporters of Israel and the supporters of Jerusalem must be on the offensive for this because we have to remind people for civil liberties, for religious freedom, for true democracy, Israel is the only country in that region of the world that stands up to the values that we hold so dear in the United States of America. And the best way to combat the lo with lies is with truth. And there's many organizations here as well as the embassy, the ambassador who can help you do that. And, and make sure people know that before Israel had Jerusalem, Jews and Christians couldn't go there. But now that Israel has Jerusalem, the holy sites of every religion are not only for worship, they are protected, they are guarded, and they are safe. You know, in 1948, Israel, Israel as a, a nation received this body. But in 1967, with Jerusalem, Israel had a heart. So I close just briefly with this and thanking the ambassador, thanking the, the uh, mission for Israel to the United Nations and all of you who are here tonight to make sure that you all know that we are proud to support Israel, proud to celebrate Jerusalem now, Le'olam, forever. Thank you very much. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally, the Jewish people our friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org. has been a staunch advocate for his country and has the, I guess we could say, unenviable task of standing up for the Jewish state in this often hostile building. Before coming here to the United Nations, Ambassador Danone served in Israel's cabinet as Israel's deputy defense minister and then as a minister of science and technology. But now he defends Israel passionately at the UN. Please welcome His Excellency, Ambassador Danny Danone. Thank you very much, Liz, for your introduction. I'm not used to it here in the UN. We are very excited to have you here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, tonight we celebrate the rightful return of a scattered Jewish people to their eternal capital, and tonight, we acknowledge our ongoing struggle for justice and respect. 50 years ago, the state of Israel witnessed a miracle. After six days of war, the people of Israel and the Jews of the diaspora came home. The old, the young, the religious and the secular, those of the past and those of the future, returned to the holiest site of our people never to lose it again. Our nation rejoiced in our victory and our proud community relished in our homecoming. Together, the Jewish people reunited with our beloved eternal capital, Jerusalem. 
Yerushalayim. Here are the numbers. For 3,000 years, the Jews have yearned for Jerusalem. Our holy temple endured total destruction twice. Foreign armies sieged our capital 23 times, and empires conquered it 44 times. We have prayed for Jerusalem and toward Jerusalem for thousands of years. We find its name mentioned 660 times in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And we conclude two major Jewish holidays, Yom Kippur and Passover, with the declaration, next year in Jerusalem. Countless memories, stories, dreams, and prayers seal the sanctity of Jerusalem. Its holiness marks a legacy we pass from a generation to generation. Midor Ledor. I would like to take you back to one moment. In 1967, on the morning of June 7th, our soldiers liberated the old city of Jerusalem. They rushed through its ancient stone corridors and finally felt the remnants of the Western Wall. It was a special moment. Crying the words of the Kaddish, the mourner's prayer, our soldiers grieved for their fallen comrades, followed by the singing of our national anthem, Atikva, the hope with infinite joy. While they retook the old city, listening to their army radios for instructions, our sons heard Commander Mota Gur's historic declaration, Harabait Beyadenu, the Temple Mount is in our hands. As if on divine cue, Rabbi Shlomo Goren, the chief chaplain of the IDF, arrived at the scene, shofar and Torah scroll in hand. I am speaking to you from the plaza of the Western Wall. He announced live to the entire nation, to the entire world, with the blast of the shofar, Rabbi Goren proclaimed an amended version of our ancient Jewish edict this year in a rebuilt Jerusalem. On the Shavuot holiday of 1967, 200,000 people visited the wall for 13 hours straight. One eyewitness said that she had never known so electric an atmosphere before or since. The crowd sang, swayed, and danced with Torah scrolls high in the air. It was said that you could not get a plane ticket to Israel for six months, millions of Jews came to Jerusalem to rejoice in this homecoming. Secular kibbutz dwellers, ultra-Orthodox Haredim, mothers, fathers, and children all came back to touch the world's ancient holy stones. My mother was one of those early visitors to the wall. Like others, she sang and danced, she prayed and cried, and she stood with pride on that historic day in 1967. But for her, for my mother, this return was different. My mother was born in Jerusalem, a true Palestinian, if you will. She had seen the old city before Israel's establishment in 1948. She remembers a city where Jews, Muslims, and Christians live together in peace. And she recalls the long 19 years she gazed at the old city from afar yearning to return. It was indeed a dark time in history. Between 1948 and 1967, the Jewish nation had a state of our own, but within these years, the Jewish people could not pray at our holy Western Wall. It was occupied by others. Back then, our Jerusalem was torn and divided, but today, those days are history. Those days are over. We will never again spend another moment longing to return to Jerusalem as my mother did. It has been 50 years since the miracle of June 7, 1967. Jerusalem is now a cosmopolitan center of past, present, and future. It perfectly fulfills Theodor Herzl's dream of Alte Neuland, of an old new land. 
It is the only capital city in the entire Middle East that protects the freedom of religion for all religions. As Adnan Abu Uda, Jordan's former UN ambassador, admitted years later, the situation in Jerusalem under Jordanian rule was, quote, one of religious exclusion. Under Israel, it has become one of, quote, religious inclusion for millions of Jews, Muslims, and Christians. Yet, in that regard, it seems that the UN could not care less about protecting its core values. Many relentlessly deny the Jewish connection to Jerusalem. Last December, here in this building, the Security Council had the nerve, the chutzpah, to call Israel's presence in the old city of Jerusalem a, quote, flagrant violation under international law. Shortly afterward, UNESCO passed a resolution calling Israel the occupying power in Jerusalem. They have clearly never picked up a history book. It's about time they will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, today it is our duty to show the world that Jerusalem is our capital. And it is our obligation to explain without any doubt, without any hesitation, that Jerusalem belongs to Israel. We will never take her for granted. We will follow the word of the prophet Isaiah. Al chomotai Yerushalayim, ifkadati shomrim, kol ayom vekol alayla. On the walls of Jerusalem, we will post watchmen to safeguard our beloved city every day and every night. Tonight we say loud and clear that Jerusalem is the heart and soul of the Jewish people. Jerusalem will never be up for negotiation. Jerusalem is and always will be our undivided eternal capital. Thank you very much. Israel is under constant deadly terrorist knife and rocket attacks. Jewish students, professors, and Christians who support Israel face vicious discrimination at U.S. universities, all in an attempt to delegitimize the state of Israel. Israel is our ally. The Jewish people are friends. It's our duty to defend them. That's why the ACLJ is launching a massive new multinational legal campaign in defense of Israel, in the U.S., at the U.N., and with world leaders. But we need these global leaders to hear from you now. Add your name to our new petition, a petition to defend Israel from anti-Israel attacks across the globe. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or you can add your name online, aclj.org.